In this lesson, I want to introduce Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. We've actually seen that already as a means for, instead of having to statically configure IP addresses for every machine, I can allow the machine to basically request over the network for an IP address. And the DHCP server then gives that machine an IP address from its pre-configured pool of available addresses. And not just an IP address, but information such as gateway, subnet mask, DNS servers, WIN servers, and much more. Now, DHCP is something you would typically always use on your desktop machines, your mobile machines. For your servers, you'd likely want it to have the same IP address all the time. So you may not use DHCP, but instead define a static IP address. However, you can actually use DHCP and reserve IP addresses for specific MAC addresses which means that machine, even though it's requesting its IP address over the network, would always get the same IP address. I want to quickly start off just showing you how the HTTP actually works. So I'm using my network monitor. I'm monitoring my ethernet and I'm in P mode. So P mode means promiscuous, i.e. I'll capture traffic that maybe isn't targeted for or originating from this machine. It will just capture everything it can over the network. Now be aware, in a virtual environment, even if you set the promiscuous mode to on, it still may not be able to capture everything because of the way virtual switches direct traffic. So I'm going to start a new capture, and I'm going to say I only want to see DHCP type traffic. And I'm going to say start. Now I'm going to go over to my client, and I'm going to say I want to release my IP address, and I want to renew. So it's going to now request an IP address over the network. You'll actually notice in the background, I set the PowerShell window open where I set the DHCP to enabled again using PowerShell. So that set net IP interface, DHCP enabled, and I reset the DNS servers to also use DHCP. So now what I should see when I go back to my server is I'll stop the capture. I see a number of packets. So what I'm seeing here is firstly, from a source, basically there is no IP address to everything, 255, 255, 255, all ones basically is a broadcast. So it's sending out a discover. That client machine is sending out, hey, I'd like an IP address. Here's my MAC address. Now what it is sending out, because in the past it had an IP address, it's saying, hey, I don't know if I can have this address back that I had previously. Then the DHCP server sends it an offer. So the client sends a discover, the DHCP server sends it an offer. And the offer is basically saying, I'm offering you this IP address. This is the IP address I'm going to offer you. And it gives it information about the subnet mask and other details, domain name servers, the domain name, the gateway, giving it various pieces of information that it can then use. So it's all part of the HTTP. So it's offered that client an IP address and various pieces of information. The client then actually makes a request for that. So they sent out a discovery, they have one or more offers back, and then the client sends back actually a request saying, yes, this is the one I would like, please. I would like to request this offer you've made me. Then that server acknowledges that. Basically says, yes, I've got your request for that offer. Here you go, it's now yours. So that IP address belongs to that client and it just confirms the information that makes up that original offer. And that's it. That machine now has an IP address. It's basically four packets. The client broadcasts out a discovery to the entire network. Now I do say the entire network. In reality, the way switches work, it would only go to its local subnet. Most switches will actually filter out these types of broadcasts beyond its local subnet. It then gets an offer back from one or more DHCP servers. It picks one and then makes a request saying, I would like this one to be confirmed. And then it's acknowledged by that DHCP server that now belongs to them. Notice I did also get another DHCP offer from a different server saying, hey, here's the IP address I'm offering you. But there was never any more traffic. Basically the client had already decided it wanted this offer over here. So that's the fundamentals of how the traffic flows over DHCP. So I showed that manual process a client manually requesting an IP address using the IP config command. But the reality is this all happens automatically. So when a machine starts up that's configured to use DHCP on a new network, it will just send out a DHCP request. 
If it already has an IP address, because it's previously been connected to that network, it would send out a renewal. And that's what we did with the IP config slash renew. Because basically what happens is the DHCP server gives each client a IP address for a least amount of time. And you configure what that lease is. And so by default, even if you do nothing else, even a client that stays turned on and, and doesn't power down, at 50% of that lease interval, it's automatically going to send an IP config slash renew anyway. So it will automatically renew those IP addresses. So if a machine stays on, it's going to actually keep that same IP address for a prolonged duration. Now you may wonder, well, why would I use DHCP? It sounds like there's extra traffic going over the network. There's extra administrative work to do. But the reality is the amount of network traffic is very small. That renewal only happens at 50% of the lease time. So if I have a lease time of eight days, for example, it's only every four days a machine would send out a renewal request. And think of the administrative effort required if you manually set IP addresses on, for example, desktop machines. They change frequently. There's always new ones. They get retired. They get rebuilt. Trying to manually manage all of those IP addresses would be very, very difficult. With DHCP, a machine just gets the IP address automatically. If it's then turned off and destroyed, well, once that IP address lease expires, that IP address can just be given to someone else automatically. So it actually saves you a lot of administrative effort. So it's simpler to actually manage this. Now, one thing I did want to point out is that remember I talked about that broadcast of a machine when it wants an IP address only actually happens on the local subnet. So it's network because switches, gateways that connect different networks together will drop those type of broadcast packets. So this does mean I need a DHCP server on each of my local subnets. That's really not that practical. So the reality is you will create something called a DHCP relay agent. And that relay agent will sit on each of your networks. And when it sees those DHCP requests, it will relay that request to the proper DHCP server and pass back those responses to give it an IP address. You can also perform those types of configuration on switches themselves. So they can actually act as that relay and forward those packets on. So this concludes this introduction to DHCP. And then we're going to actually look at how we configure these DHCP services in future lessons.